Hello everyone, I'm Alex Absalom. And I'm Hannah. And today uh, I want to uh, pose a question that I was asked by a group of 20-something leaders earlier this week and it's a topic we've talked about and it's this. How do you move from a program-minded mentality or culture in your church to one that is focused on disciple making? And the reason they were asking this uh, it was because that they see in their church there's a high tendency that anything that's to do with discipleship or going with the gospel uh, if it gets into the waters of the church and, it, and it's spread around lots of people start to get into it it very quickly becomes programized it becomes a kind of list of to-dos it's a six weeks boom you're done and they they were recognizing that that's actually different from being uh, to creating something that's going to be all about making disciples. So, Hannah, how would you start to address that issue uh, in in a church where things turn quickly to uh, being very programmatic uh, in their focus? Well, I think that often we think that discipleship is a lot about information transfer, that to be a mature Christian there are certain things you need to know, certain things you need to believe. And uh, whilst that is true, uh, I think discipleship is more about um, relationship, particularly in the context of sort of trust and um, openness and encouragement and accountability. Um, and it's about imitation. So Paul, various different times, talks about um, imitate me. So I've got some Bible verses here. So 1 Corinthians 11, 1. Follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. Um, 1 Corinthians 4.16, therefore I urge you to imitate me. And Philippians 4.9, whatever you've learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice. So in some ways it seems a bit arrogant for us to say, hmm. oh, follow me, imitate me, do what I do. So... Uh, whilst we shouldn't be arrogant, there should be something about our lives to an extent. We, you know, mm. we acknowledge we're not mm -hmm. perfect. We still make mistakes, mm -hmm. obviously. Mm -hmm. But it should, to a degree, be good enough where we're just at least submitted to Jesus. And when we do mis make mistakes, we're bringing it to him. And we're just saying, look, I'm, I'm doing what I can to pursue Jesus, pursue relationship with him follow me as I do that. And I think as uh, when we find ourselves in situations where we veer towards a programme or, or making discipleship a programme, th it seems to me that we misunderstand uh, what it is to be a disciple. So uh, it, as I look at Jesus and the Gospels, he doesn't create a programme. He invites these people into a three-year journey, when in fact an eternal journey, uh, with him. And he shares his life and he opens up and they get to walk with him, they get to be with him. And yes, I'm sure there were specific things he wanted to communicate at points, Sermon on the Mount being a good example of that. But um, he, he, he wraps it in this much richer context of relationships. And if we think about uh, almost the defini definition of a disciple, what we would say is that a disciple is someone who hears and obeys Jesus. Mm -hmm. um, so um, if that is the case, then relationships help with that. It's not just, oh, you need to know this and this and this. It's not information. It's us in relationship mm -hmm. with Jesus. But if we're doing it in relationship with other people as well, then they help us to, to be accountable to, are we actually wanting to hear? And then are we doing what we're told to do when we hear something? Yeah, so that would seem to me then that part of our task as we as we invest into people, we invite them into a journey of life change. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's absolutely fine to use a Bible study or a syllabus or some sort of... Pro so we're not saying programmes are wrong? No, you know, like the Alpha course, brilliant tool, or... Uh, Even Financial Peace University. Financial Peace University, there's some awesome Bible studies that you can get. There's, there's some fantastic things out there. Um, but it's... It, the way to see it is those are not the end, they're a means to an end. And don't rely on them, certainly. Yeah, don't rely on them. Like, uh, the danger is we, we could turn into a, list, a checklist and it's like, oh, I did my six weeks, I now, I, you know, I, 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 or I read that thing and now I'm good, I'm done. I've kind of got it sorted. Whereas actually what we're doing is saying, no, 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 this is, this is a life change process and your life should look different as a result of having done this. And yeah, we've got this, this tool to that helps us get there but the whole point is do you look different would your friends at work notice something different about you or your or your spouse or your kids or your 
um, significant others in your life, they would see there's a difference about you. Are you walking more closely with the Lord? Or whatever the issue is that's, that's going on. Um, I, so I think it's escaping the, uh, I did that book, I'm fine. And instead it's saying, uh, here's how I'm continuing to learn and grow and I'm living it out differently. So I'm all about the practicals. I want to mm-hmm. see, okay, how does this work in reality? Mm-hmm. Um, theory's good, but I get bored after a while. Okay. So uh, we, we came up with a list of sort of, of practi- practically speaking, what does it look like? And I guess it's having, a, whether you're discipling some people or being discipled, hopefully both, um, you want to have those relationships where you're opening up your life. So if you're being discipled, you're being vulnerable. But even if you're discipling others, you need to have that element of vulnerability and um, sharing the realities of life. Uh, second thing I would say is we need to have regularity in this. So uh, the people need to have a... You can't just do it once a month or an occasional hit so to speak metaphorically uh so instead it's like there's a regular opening up of your life to them and then uh thirdly uh just being engaged with the whole person so it's not just a oh we're only interested in your spiritual life and how you're growing but it's you know it's it's the holistic thing so you know how's their family how's your health how's whatever so you're you're loving the whole person and not just one bit of it uh, a fourth way to escape the, the negative trap of programs uh, in your disciple making is to make sure people have specific steps for growth. So like we're giving you now. Uh, uh, in other words, it's all very well having this great study, but, but ultimately it's, so what difference is that going to make? Or how are you going to live this out on a Tuesday afternoon at 2.15 when you're with your annoying work colleague? Or whatever the deal is. So specific next steps, what are you going to do to live this out? And the next step would be encouragement and accountability. So uh, are you encouraging those people um, and are you keeping them accountable? Uh, So it should be both the loving and the not letting them off the hook, Mm. but asking the follow-up question, did they do what they felt Jesus was telling them to do? Mm. I think that's really important actually because uh, one of the things I've noticed is that but it's a mixture of just our culture generally, and often in churches, we don't do the accountable part very well, mm. do we? We, we, we? we skip out of it, we avoid it, we feel awkward or whatever, but actually you're not truly loving the person if you don't hold someone accountable. That's how we grow. It is how we grow, yeah. So we need that. We need to step into that. And the last thing would be, and it, we've kind of covered this, but um, uh, it's success. What is your measure of success? And success is not, did you complete the course? The success is, has your life changed? And I think when we have that in mind, that will help us uh, see programs as tools that are a means to an end, but making sure they're not the end in themselves. And so our focus is on uh, life change that's built around imitation. And then, you know, the people who we are discipling, we want them to then go and do this with other people. So it's, it's passing on, it's not just... Absolutely. Just to one group of people. Correct. Everything has to be designed to multiply. Okay, so we're going to give you some homework. So, Hannah, why don't you do that now? Okay, so we want you to think, who are you actually discipling? Not just meeting with, but who are you actually in a discipling relationship with? Um, So, yes, it's not just a programme, but are you giving them encouragement, but also accountability and, um, yeah, asking them that those follow up questions in a loving way. So uh, wherever you're watching this, we'd love you to jump onto our website, dandelionresourcing.com. And there are a bunch of other videos like this. And particularly, we would like you to jump on the one for this and add comments, thoughts, questions, agree, disagree. And uh, we look forward to interacting with you there.